Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I hope everyone is doing well and staying warm. I have um, some things to show you today that I've been working on for a while. And I'm going to show you the whole pile. All right, so I am a doodler by nature, but I would like to take what I've learned from doodling and turn it into something else occasionally. So I've been watching Alice Loves Drawing, hashtag Alice Loves Drawing on Instagram, which I've talked about in another video. And I think my doodling is paying off. At least I hope it is. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> All right, so um, I have been fascinated I, with vellum. And so I bought a bunch of vellum last year and I've been playing around with it, and also photo paper. I really love photo paper. I like glossy photo paper, not matte, but glossy photo paper. All right, so what I've been doing is, let's see, let's start with the oldest one first, is I have been drawing, let me put you down further, down. I have been drawing sheets uh, on ve vellum with uh, pen, ink, Ink pens? Wait, not ink pens. Uh, uh, bit, a bit if these guys, <laughs> you know, I've been drawing sheets of flowers because I like using them for backgrounds. I like tearing them up. I like painting them. I like doing all kinds of things with them. So let's go back out again. So I've been drawing them on the vellum. And then I've been putting these plain black and white sheets in my Etsy store. And I'll show you why I do black and white. Okay, so that's the first one. And let's see what's the next one. This one. These are forget-me-nots. I guess this is not the greatest background in the world to put on here. Uh, hang on a second. Let me get something else. All right, so I'm using the back of a tablet that's black and so this is um, done with the same type pen and these are forget-me-nots it's the whole sheet and again it's on vellum that's number two number three which one did I do next um, let's see then I did this one although I did put white dots on them I think I have a plain version of this somewhere I can't remember, but I think I do. So those are Radicchia. No, not Radicchia. Oh shoot, I can't remember. Anyway, flowers. <laughs> I'll come up with a name later when I edit. All right, so there's that sheet. So that's three. Number four is not finished. I've got some of this around here to do. Um, the vellum is, I think, is eight and a half by 11, but I have other papers that are larger that I've done things on that I've had to cut down to eight and a half by 11 because my printer only takes that size paper. So that's why I found that I like the vellum and it's the right size of vellum for the printer. So here's this one. This is the original one. I'm still drawing on that one. Then I did this one with the leaves and colored it all in, and then forgot, as I'm coloring it, I should have copied it in black and white. So this one is only uh, available in colors, and I'm not sure if this is in the Etsy store or not, but if it isn't, it will be. Okay, so there's that one. Then I did this one, which are hydrangeas. It's just the one stem off the hydrangea. This one I did a couple days ago. These are zinnias. My friend Josie Bergstrom from Norfolk, Virginia, likes photographing things, and she goes to the Norfolk Botanical Garden, and she posted three zinnias on her Facebook page, which I saved the page, and then I pulled it up one day, and I was sketching. These are three different versions of um, zinnias that she took photos of, and I asked her if I could have permission to put it in my Etsy store, and she gave me her blessing. So I took the three different pictures that I had drawn and combined them into a whole bunch of zinnias on one page. 
There's this large one right here. Well, let's do this one because you can see this one better. This is large one here. And then there is the double where there's a, a larger one and a small one. And then there's the smaller sized one or a medium sized one right here. So those are all zinnias. And then Cosmos. This is my latest one. Well, actually, I worked on both of these kind of in the same day. Anyway, so there's that. So what I had in mind was that I should be able to print these off and on any surface I like and get the black and white and then color in. So since I like glossy paper, I decided to start with this. And yes, it's got glare on it. I'm sorry. Um, this is the black and white vellum file printed on glossy photo paper and then it is colored in by hand with two different kinds of watercolor uh, brush markers, Koi and then this brand here which I have no idea what this is. I just have a, a whole bunch of them and I like them for this. This They work great on this. If you use Posca it's going to cover up all the detail work that I drew in there. You don't want that. So you need um, and uh, Sharpie also covers stuff up. So what you need is an alcohol ink that's translucent. translucent. Um, you could do print, print this on a piece of watercolor paper, so on and so forth. All right, so here's the original done in pinks. Problem was that I printed it, I took this and then wanted to see how it would look on another piece of photo paper after I scanned this one. So I did it, I didn't do the second one on photo paper. I'll show you the photo paper one in a minute. I did this on more vellum. The problem was, is that it did the pink, and I'm sorry, it looks very dark with the black, but you can, you can see what I'm talking about. It didn't do the uh, yellow insides. All it did was print off the color. I'm not sure exactly why. So I had to go back after this was printed off on vellum and I had to take watercolor and then I went through and did the centers. Um, today I have noticed, I did this yesterday, last night or yesterday, um, that my color cartridge and my black and white cartridge were both going bad. So I'm not sure if the reason it didn't print the yellow on the inside is because there was no yellow in the cartridge. Okay, so there's that one. So. So this is how it started. First I drew on vellum, scanned that. Then I printed the scanned one on here, colored this with um, watercolor brushes. Then I scanned it. Then I took um, vellum again, put it in the printer, and ran off the pink one on the vellum. Like I said, it did not do the yellow. It did not pick up the yellow from the original one that I did. So I colored that in. So I got kind of aggravated that didn't work. So this time, this is the photo of a photo. <laughs> this is a reprint. There's no hand coloring on this. This is the original. This is the print. This is darker and you can see that the places are more pronounced in here than what are actually done on the original. So you can see the side-by-side -side difference here. I'm not sure if it's particular to my printer because you know every printer is different. So I'm not sure if this is something that is, I don't know, that, that my printer just prints it off that way. But it did get the yellow this time because I changed the cartridge. <laughs> Okay, so here's the original. There's this. And I still like this. I wanted something that had bright, vibrant colors. And this definitely is bright. So there's A and B side by side. This looks more purpley. This looks more pink. All right, so that's those. So then, let's see, do I have this one on here? No. All right, so I... Where's the original? 
I did the, um, oh, here it is on the other side. I showed you all the originals and now I can't find them. All right, here is the original. These are the zinnias. This is this printed off on photo paper. I have not colored it, but it did a great print on photo paper. There's that one. Here are the hydrangeas. And here are the photo paper hydrangeas. I think they're going to look great once they're colored in. All right, then I have the forget-me-nots. Where's that paper? Here are the forget-me-nots on the vellum. And here they are in photo paper. Let's see. Which way was I doing this? This, this, this. And then I have this on the vellum, this on the photo paper. Okay, so there's those. So last night, just to see, you know, how I was going to make this happen, is I took the black and white vellum file and printed it on regular computer paper. Then I took watercolors and I watercolored the flowers. Oh, well, actually, yeah, this one's watercolor. Then I did this one in watercolor. This one in watercolor. This one is colored pencil. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to scan these or what I'm going to do with these, but I've been trying to play around with different kinds of mediums to make the flowers um, look vibrant for everyone that prints them off out of the Etsy store. The thing is, is I cannot determine how your printer is going to work when you print these things off. You know what I mean? Even my own, there was a difference. So I'm just playing around with these. Like I said, I, I'm going to, I think I might scan all these to see how they turn out if I print them off on photo paper, what they would look like, and then decide what I'm going to do with them. So let me go ahead and just do that right now. I didn't think about that before I got on here. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit and remember that everything started with the drawing on vellum. Then the drawing was printed out in black and white on photo paper. And I forgot to bring the photo paper. No, nope, here it is. I want to show you what I'm using. This is photo paper that I've had a long time. And... I have a little bit left. I used to, uh, you know, I use it for jelly printing and to draw with on Posca pins on it um, f with doodle flowers again. So any kind of photo paper will do, but I prefer the glossy because I, I like it much better than the matte finish. I have some of both, but I do prefer the glossy. So it doesn't have to be some name brand stuff. I just got it from Office Depot. No big deal. All right, so there's that. All right, so then I went to the computer and I printed off um, these guys. Where is it? the original? There we go. This is the original because I printed the black and white off onto um, computer paper. Watercolor. Uh, this nope. This one is color pencil, and then the insides are watercolor. All right here is the print job on the glossy photo paper. Here's the original, there's the photocopy. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with the photocopy. I really like it. It's not the same um, tent, tent shade. It's not the same tones um, as on here, but I think I actually like this better. I don't know, what do you think? Okay, so there's exhibit number one. Exhibit number two, where is it? Well, I brought it all over here. Okay, so let's do this one next since I can't find the other one. This is the watercolor on computer paper. This is how it printed out on the glossy photo paper. I'm 
not liking this one as much as the yellow results because I can see where my printer lagged and I see lines in here. So I'm not as happy with this. I think it's because it couldn't grip the paper. The top part looks pretty good. Not the, pop, the top part's not so bad. Wait, is that the top or the bottom? Here we go, this way. That's not so bad. It's not horrible. But the, the um, printer had a hard time gripping the photo paper. And even though there is a photo paper setting on there, I did try photo paper and it said glossy, some other brand other than HP. And it had a hard time gripping the paper. And I think that's what this is from, is that it really would prefer to use the its own paper for some reason. It could not grip this. This all came out of the same box. I, don't, I can't explain why this one looks not wonderful, but that's not my point though. It's the color difference. I still don't, this looks too pinkish to me. So I think next time I do another purple, it will not be this shade because I don't think the printer, the color printer does well with this shade. So this one might be out. All right, I'm missing one of my papers. Okay, so this one is the watercolor on computer paper. And this is the photo paper print. Look at that. I think it's more beautiful in the, with the photo paper. I really do like this much better. And uh, guess what? I see lines. So I think it, it prints in sections and as it rolls through, it's that's what's causing the line. So it may not be the made combination of the grip and how it's printing things. I see it on these two. Let me go back and look at this one. I do not see any lines on the yellow whatsoever, and I'm looking really hard at it. But I see lines here, and I should see them about the same place here, and I don't. So it might be the coloring, that it takes more um, color from the printer to make the red and the purple than the yellow, the shades of yellow. And so it has to be in there longer. I'm not really sure what the explanation is, but whatever it is, it made lines in my print. I mean, it's okay. If, if I'm just going to use it for a background or snip off parts of it, I don't think anyone's really going to have a canary over it. It's my art. But that's what happened with my printer. And I have an HP printer. All right, so I can't find the paper for the last one. Where is the paper for the last one? Hang on, let me go find that one piece of paper. Okay, this one is the orange kind of coloring. It was on the scanner still. It was the last one I scanned. So there's this one. And there's how it looks from the printer. And again, there's none of those line marks in it. So it must take more color for the reds and the purples. Different mixes of reds and purples for it to make the color bright. And so it stays in the printer longer. So there's the two contrasting. This one, I, I like the way it looks, but it's not as deep as this one. And maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> All right, so I, I thought I would just come on and do this little experiment with the photo paper so that you would see that when you buy things from my Etsy store, that's the reason I put them in black and white so that when you color it and you print it off on your printer, you're not disappointed or you can see that it's your printer. It's not what I sold you because I sold you black and white. Um, I will put these colors up. On, I'll put the originals of these. I might have to iron them though. I think maybe they need to be ironed. And then I will scan these and put these on Etsy. But I think to be honest with you, not to shoot myself on my foot for sales, it would be much better if you did purchase the black and whites and then you do your own coloring the way you want it. I think it looks much better this way and then you color it. You pick your colors. You pick your uh, medium that you want to use on it. But I am going to tell you though, Sharpie markers will cover up any details. Poscas will 
totally cover up your details. What you need are things that are more translucent that you can look through and you can see all the detail work that I drew in the flowers. Otherwise, you, there's no point in you buying it, to be honest with you. So I think you're much better, better off buying this that's going to be listed on Etsy, all these that are like this, my originals, than it is to buy the color ones because my interpretation of pink is one thing when I scan it, but when it gets to you, that interpretation might be different. This is the copy. This is the original. Sorry for the glare. Don't you know this is the only time all day the stinking sun comes out? Okay, everybody, so that's it for me for um, for today. I do. I will scan this one, and I, I don't remember if it's an Etsy store or not, but I will scan it if it's not, and I will put it on there. But I think what I might do is... I might do a black and white of this one also so you can color your leaves in the way you want them. I think that would be better it, better all the way around that if ev I just do everything in black and white and you guys can take it off and color it. I do this while I'm watching TV. You can do it too. Thanks everyone for coming by and thanks everybody who attended the hop and left me lovely comments. I really do appreciate it. Thanks and I will see you guys next week. Bye!